Welcome back to the red path. Excuse the clickbait thumbnail, but I've got to play the algorithm game, you know. We don't run ads here, so I feel fine with a bit of cringe bullshit once in a while. Please join our Patreon and check our affiliate links below. Anyway, today we're going to do something very, very silly. So hopefully we've all got the codex in our grubby little hands and leafing through those unholy pages, we're all wondering how best to make a fun, strong army. We're going to be covering a lot of the options we have access to over the coming weeks, but I couldn't wait to share this little bit of jank with you. Right, onto the crunch. You're going to start with a Lord Discordant, 175 points base with a mandatory 15 point Mark of Corn upgrade as a World Eater. This gives him plus one strength on the charge when charged or heroically intervening. You're next going to spend 2 CP to give him both a Warlord trait and a Relic. Now, there's lots to choose from, and we posted a video a couple of weeks ago about our favourite options, but for right now, we're looking at the True Berserker Warlord trait from the World Eaters supplement, and the Gorge of Eternal Hate from the main codex. True Berserker halves incoming damage from the fire and shooting phases, so a damage 4 weapon becomes damage 2. Nice. The Gorge provides the bearer with a 4-up invulnerable save and plus 1 to armor saves, improving that from a 2-up 5-up to a 1-up 4-up. And in addition, when the Disco dies, he will explode, and every enemy unit within 3 inches will suffer D3 mortal wounds on a 2-to-5 and 3 mortal wounds on a 6. Now that's pretty tanky, right? A 1-up 4-up T6 9-wound model that halves damage. But wait, there's more. You should probably be running at least one Dark Apostle in your lists for Illusory Supplication, that's the trans to hit power, because this needs to go on the Disco. If you are considering a second Apostle, well, Benediction of Darkness will put him in light cover for a zero up save with Armor of Contempt. That's effectively a minus one plus save. Light cover works because it's the terrain rule which restricts it to infantry, etc., not the cover rule itself. Next, we also have access to the Stratagem Infernal Engine, which reduces incoming damage by 1, and due to GW's order of operations, division, multiplication, addition, and then subtraction, you will halve damage from True Berserker rounding up before reducing by 1, again rounding up. So what does this mean in practice? Well, let's say your opponent has three squads of six Eradicators, each with four Melter Rifles and two Multi Melters. They're not quite in Melter range, but that's still a lot of Melty goodness to shoot. It's a total of 48 Melter shots, in fact. Because of Illusory, and assuming the Disco is no longer protected by Lookout, sir, only 24 of those will hit, mathematically, due to no rerolls and ones to threes missing. Strength 8 versus Toughness 6 means two thirds will wound, or 16 of them. With a minus 1 plus save, including Armor of Contempt, you'll get a 3 up armor save versus Melter, meaning you'll save two thirds, so only five of those should wound. Assuming average rolls on the damage dice of 3.5, each of these will be halved to 2, and with the 1 CP spent, reduced from 2 to 1, meaning those 48 Melter shots from 870 points of Marines, each firing twice, did 5 damage to the Disco. If they were all in Melter range, however, getting the plus 2 damage, with an average of 5.5, they would be halved to 3 and reduced to 2, meaning they only just killed the Disco mathematically by 1 point of damage. It's worth noting that the Disco is susceptible to psychic damage and damage in other phases from mortal wounds, etc., and one damage weapons with volume will reduce him over the game. A cheeky Wartsmith turning behind could help with that healing D3 wounds a turn, on top of the one that he already heals himself. Personally, I like three spawns screening this build, against psychic armies especially, absorbing the smites with their own regenerative cheese. To close off, I just want to share a little anecdote I got from this build at an RTT I went to last weekend. My second game was against Custodies, and I picked the Dawn Eagle Captain as my Skulls for the Skull Throne target for my Disco. During round 2, the Dawn Eagle and three bikers charged my Disco, but failed to kill him. I fought back and picked up one or two of the bikers, but after taking only a couple of wounds, was confident I'd pick up the remainder in my next fight phase. So it flips over to my turn, and during my shooting phase, I decide to put the Bell Flamer from the Disco into the Captain to soften him up for the fight phase. I roll 6 hits on the 2d3, and I add 2 for Let the Galaxy Be Burn. Awesome, 8 hits. I roll to wound, and wound all 8 times. Okay, this is pretty cool. The Captain 
then proceeds to fail every single save, taking 16 damage and dying. This gives me 10 victory points for Skulls for the Skull Throne, but not 15 as I didn't kill him in melee. I lost the game by 4 victory points. Absolutely ridiculous. Alright, I'm done for now. There's plenty of other great character builds you can put together, and we're going to look into the Demon Prince, Master of Executions, etc. shortly to see how to glean the power from those beasts. So until next time, folks, stay healthy, stay safe, and kill Main Burn. Yeah.